Hi, my name is Tammy and welcome to another mini lesson on nutrition. Today we're going to talk about the mind diet. So this is a specific eating pattern that's going to be very helpful for prevention of Alzheimer's and uh, cognitive decline and keeping you sharp. All right, so let's start with a little quiz. Check your memory right off the bat. Did you know that foods that you eat can actually improve your memory? Did you know that certain eating patterns are preventative for Alzheimer's? Did you know that you can boost your memory with what you eat? And are you aware that some eating patterns are actually harmful to your memory? So what exactly is the mind diet? So the MIND diet takes elements of the Mediterranean diet and combines them with the DASH diet. Both the Mediterranean diet and the DASH diet have been around and recommended by physicians for decades. So we know that they're very beneficial. Now the MIND diet takes the best pieces of those and targets your, uh, your memory, your cognitive function, you know, basically how your mind is performing and it, takes the elements of that and combines it for this Mediterranean DASH intervention for neurodegenerative delay. So just to give you a background, Mediterranean diet is widely recommended for uh, the prevention of heart disease. So this would be cholesterol and other conditions, um, keeping your fat slow, arthrosclerosis and such. Your DASH diet is recommended for high blood pressure. So also something that we like to be concerned with. So combining these two and following this eating pattern of the MIND diet is going to be just another way to enhance your overall health. Now today's diet is, or today's lesson is brief. So um, just a quick little bite so that you can get some information. I'm not going to go through all of this. I'm just going to touch the highlights So just to give you an overview, of course, all fruits and vegetables are recommended. However, with the MIND diet, we are specifically looking at the introduction of green leafy vegetables. So those are things like kale, spinach, you know, your salads, your arugula, those kinds of things. And you're looking to, eat, to get those into your diet about six times a week. So more is, of course, better in this case, um, but, you know, if you can only do it four, that's better than three. So just do what you can to work these green leafies in there. Berries are another food of interest for the MIND diet and trying to work berries in twice a week. So what we're looking for are bright colors here, high fiber, bright colored berries. So strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, anything in that purple, blue, red spectrum there. Those are super beneficial for antioxidants. And then looking at the various kinds of fats that we get. So nuts, um, any kind of nut is going to work really well. Just remember that not all nuts are created equal and they do have a high calorie load. So you don't want to, for instance, get a jumbo uh, container of nuts and eat them all in one day. That certainly wouldn't serve anyone. But, you know, to add in a few, a serving a day, which would be about, about 20, we'll call it 20 almonds or a quarter of a cup of nuts, uh, would certainly be a great way to boost your mind health. Um, olive oil is another fat. We prefer this when we are cooking over things like butter or lard or any of those. And then fish, your healthy or your fatty fish that come from cold water sources, salmon, sardines, trout, those kinds of things, those are really high in omega-3s. And omega-3s are a nutrient of interest in the MIND diet. So again, your fish oil, olive oil, and your nuts are great sources of fats that you can add in. And then we have whole grains and beans. Uh, while they're not the same thing, they do kind of fit into a, a category together. So your foods like your oatmeal, quinoa, um, brown rice, those are going to be three a day. And that's nothing new. The, the recommendations for most uh, eating patterns do follow a three servings of whole grains a day. There are a lot of nutrients we get from whole grains. 
So unless you have a, a reason to, a medical reason to, go ahead and enjoy them. Enjoy the wheat bread and uh, the whole wheat pasta and all of these things. And don't fear them for the starch that they also have in them. Just watch your portion. Beans are recommended at least four meals every week. It's a really easy way to include beans to switch out your beef for beans on a taco or to uh, make a salad and throw this a quarter cup of beans on top. So beans, lentils, soybeans, they'll make really great soups. You could put them in there and enjoy them, you know, four or five times a week. Um, and then now both the Mediterranean diet and the DASH diet, as well as the MIND diet, because obviously it's the combination. Many diets are actually recommending less and less in the animal protein category. So your meats, right? Um, however, that's not to say that you can't have reasonable portions of chicken, turkey, even beef and pork. Absolutely. Uh, the, the recommendation is for more of the poultry than of the red meat. Red meat is recommended to be limited to about once a week. So you can absolutely, if that's something you enjoy as part of your diet, just trying to move more towards a plant-based diet as much as possible. And then of course, we are all going to ask the question, well, what about my wine? What about my alcohol? Whereas we don't recommend that you add this if you're not already including this as part of your habits. Uh, you certainly don't want to pick up this habit, but if you do choose to drink the occasional glass of wine, red wine is going to have resveratrol, which they believe might be predictive against Alzheimer's in small portions. So that's something to consider. Now let's move on. Keep your mind nourished, right? So there are some things that we don't want to include. Some things that are not helpful to your um, to your waistline, for sure, your heart health, absolutely, but also seem to be uh, responsible for brain fog, for um, maybe promoting Alzheimer's or dementia. So there, you want to be really careful. And these are things that we're all familiar with. Those would be your butters and your margarines, your really fatty foods, your cheeses, your red meat, your fried foods. Uh, these kinds of things should be occasional items that you have. So occasional is going to be less than daily, um, in some cases less than monthly. You know, like fried food is not something that you need to consume in your diet and it's better off if you do that only occasionally on special occasions. Um, as I mentioned on the previous slide, red meat of course is something that you uh, could have if that's something you enjoy, but you want to make sure that it's less often and this is one food I recommend that you do an organic grass fed when possible. It's going to have a better nutrition profile than say for instance, your 80, 20, um, ground beef, you know, just generic kind of ground beef that you get. And of course, unfortunately our pastries and our sweets, these should be less often kinds of foods. Uh, and you probably even notice when you eat these things, you might notice the difference in, you know, a little bit of brain fog or how you feel maybe sluggish afterwards. So it's definitely something to consider. All right. So after all of that, I just want to pull out a few things. And if you, you know, decide that nothing else is going to change, here are a few things I want you to really think about. Easy to manage. Try to have fish occasionally throw in some flax seeds or chia seeds or nuts whenever possible because these are great ways to boost your omega-3s. Eggs are a really great source of choline, which has been linked over and over again to brain health, so that's a good thing. Um, and again, like the meat products, you want to do your organic and your free-range eggs whenever possible. Uh, and then turmeric, which is also uh, curcumin, then that is a spice that is known for boosting memory and focus. And I don't know about you guys, but I could use some focus. <laughs> and then of course, I couldn't possibly do this lesson without mentioning dark chocolate. It is an antioxidant rich and protective food. However, again, here there's always a caveat. However, you don't want to overdo it. So 
making sure that um, you know you stick to your ounce or less a day. So this is an occasional food, but every once in a while, it's certainly not going to um, to cause any great harm. So that wraps everything up. I told you this was going to be a quick one. Uh, and my best advice to you is to aim for brain boosting foods 80% of the time. And then when you see fit about the rest of the 20%, you can go ahead and have the foods that, um, that don't quite fit into that list. So absolutely. So if you uh, enjoy a milk chocolate instead of a dark chocolate, as long as it's not an everyday thing, then there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. So thank you so much for uh, hanging out with me today for this presentation. And um, if you have any questions, go ahead and reach out to the Moog In-Health Wellness Center and schedule a nutrition appointment.